emancipation. Let's play a great big part of our history. Stand up tall, yes, be proud and be strong. We are participants of the Caribbean. And we participate in today. We are playing a part for our culture. Let's unite, show love, peace and harmony. Let's unite, come join with me. The world is for us to see. We got proof and evidence. Let's represent in confidence. Men and women of darker skin were created for the same goal to win. Men and women with fair complexion are also to be accepted with no rejection. My land, and it doesn't matter what or where I'm from, I'm always a boastful member of CARICOM. Top of the morning to you. Good morning. You're listening to the Big Maximum Radio 104.1, and we're live on Facebook as well. And of course, on our daily uh, Max TV channel 3, that's uh, the Kaya Television Network. Top of the morning to each and every one of you, wherever you are. If you are celebrating your born day, well, happy born day to you, or birthday, whatever you want to call it. Top of the morning to you. And we definitely wish you to see many more. And for those people who are involved in divorce cases and what have you, we ask that maybe you can uh, look it over and think about it and uh, maybe you can work from there because that is not such a good idea. A long time ago, I started something called uh, divorce parties. <laughs> and, uh, you know, um, that's how it is when you are living a different lifestyle and uh, lots of different information or, uh, yeah, promotional ideas come into the picture and, uh, you know, divert you from the truth. And the truth is indeed that uh, you should be able to uh, get things together. And, and when you hear about divorce procedures, it is something that can be worked out, but nobody wants to admit one to another. So you can really look into it. All the same, good morning to each and every one of you and those who are celebrating their anniversaries on this day. You know, God bless you and continue on that path. And uh, whatever, true, thick and thin, that's what it is said. Uh, but sometimes some people just can't go no more. I mean, you know, they, they, they close the deal right there because of something that the other party did. And, um, mm -hmm. and then, of course, they do get motivated from other people. Huh, girl, you're too fool. You know, I never want me to put up with that. And, and likewise, uh, guys get, you know, this, uh, you know, things like that. And so that's how, that's how it ends up, the way how it does. But all the same, good morning to you. Look forward in having a beautiful day today. It is indeed a, a wonderful day. Ni nice and chilly. Not too cold, but just right there on the average, you know. But this is a time when people who are alone, you know, gets more lonely. Because this is a time when you need someone to um, cuddle up. And I was reading something on the, on the Facebook about that. Somebody had posted that. And it is so true. I would like to uh, get that perhaps another day when it gets colder to read for you. And, um, yeah, you know, sometimes you don't want to learn something. You, you, you didn't have any intention to learn something, but, you know, that is how life is. Uh, they, they, it makes it a possibility that you learn it whether you want it to or not, you know. So, and especially like into listening to the program, like it or not, that's how it is right here. And we give you new ideas, new information, and we try to come up with, with new solutions as well, alternative solutions for problems. Most of the time, people just talk about the problems facing, facing us. And uh, you very rarely hear people coming up with the solution. They throw all the problems at you, especially when you're talking about political. Yeah, mm-hmm. One side start throwing this on the other side. And, you know, we are looking, we the people are looking for solutions. Because we know there are always problems. And we, we, uh, 
assume. <laughs> I don't like to use that word there, you know. But anyway, well, that's how it is. We believe that uh, that's what people are elected for, is to get solutions. But even so, um, solutions are not always solved. And sometimes we have to get down to the nitty-gritty, to the roots of the problem, and find out exactly what it is. Sometimes some people go to these universities, and they teach them a lot of things to solve different things. And uh, it doesn't work like that, sir. It doesn't work like that. Sometimes, you, you know, they, they, there's a quote in the Bible that says, um, if you build a house and they, you don't have God they with you, <laughs> you know, it makes no sense at all. So it's the same thing with these uh, solving, uh, problem solving. You know, you get taught by that way in school, in universities, and higher level education. And when you come to the nitty gritty of things, it is common sense that solve those problems right there common sense. Um, no two way about it. It is common sense. It is like when we are breaking through the, the, the tradition, the chains of tradition. You know, one tradition have it that, uh, yep, you are born in that type of way, you know, and uh, when you fall in love, you know, you fall in love with a white girl, and you know, it's a wow, my tradition wasn't like that. The tradition was supposed to have been that, you know, I am a black person, I'm supposed to fall in love with a black girl. And likewise, the same thing over there. So that, that's we have to break the, 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 the chains of tradition. As, as we break it, we will find out exactly where we're coming from. I just hope that we break the chains of this tradition that we always say, well, let's take advantage of this and take advantage of that sale. Let's stop using that word advantage and start, stop, you, uh, start using the word opportunity. We will take the opportunity to do this and the opportunity to do that. Everybody, all the media houses and everyone is using this word uh, advantage. I keep saying this, and we want to instill in it, instill in, instill in it in you that we need to change that. Top of the morning to you. Good morning, and uh, we have a, a special guest this morning in our studios, Lieutenant Edward Rabatou from the Salvation Army. So we will be uh, talking with him concerning, you know, that kettle drive and all that that goes along with the Salvation Army, and we will be getting information about the Salvation Army. As I mentioned before, uh, sometimes we don't plan to learn things. But um, you listen to Like It or Not, you will be learning as I am learning. Top of the morning to you. Remember, it is 8.25, and that's right, folks. If you're breathing, you are still alive. Good morning to you, and I will be right back right after this. Top of the morning. Have a blessed day. Good morning. Let's talk about it. You and me. Let's dance a while and talk. For a love like yours, I'd go moved anywhere. Come on over here, let's talk about love. Come on over here, let's talk about love. Come on over here, let's talk about love. Now, darling. All right, we want to say top of the morning going out there to the people there from uh, Kali Style. That's a Kali Style boutique that's going to be coming up uh, very soon in front of Martha's Kitchen, Guest House, and Laundry Services. Uh, so we'll be keeping you informed as to when the date will be that uh, they will be opening up their doors. And uh, they will be selling uh, sizes, plus sizes. That's right, uh, healthy sizes. And we want to say top of the morning to this and that. That's the... Uh, it's a restaurant style. It is indeed a restaurant, but it is called This and That, where you can create your own plate. Uh, located right there on Church Street, opposite the uh, San Ignacio, that's the Sacred Heart Church. And we'll be giving you a lot more information about that. And they do black cakes. So you can call in, call in for others as of now, 626-3378, 626-3378. This and That uh, uh, Restaurant. And um, we will give you a lot more information about what they're all about as we continue on. Good morning to you. And as I mentioned right here with me is uh, none other than uh, Pastor. It says uh, Pastor. It's Lieutenant. Lieutenant Edward uh, Robertu from the Salvation Army in Georgeville. 
Uh, say top of the morning, good morning to you. Good morning to you, Mr. Robert. Top of the morning to you, Lieutenant. Good morning. Good morning, radio listeners, and good morning, Belize. Yes, sir. So uh, you are the new uh, uh, lieutenant for the area. Yes, I just took over um, in July mm -hmm. of this year, and I'm not sure how long I will be there for, but the Salvation Army do move us around. Okay. So, yes. But how long have you been a, a, a Salvation uh, uh, Army member? Well, I've been in the Salvation Army since I am seven years old. Okay. And so it's some over some 40 years now. Okay. So uh, how do they grade you? I mean, it's by years or it's by different mission that you go through around the world that they grade you from uh, corporal and sergeant? Because it, it, this follows the tradition of the army, right? Yes, it does, but it doesn't um, work that way. Mm -hmm. For example, like how I'm a lieutenant, I had to go to Jamaica to study for two years, okay. after which I was ordained as a minister of the gospel and being commissioned as an officer of the Salvation Army. And that's how I got the rank of lieutenant. Okay. And so if I go further now, um, another five years, then I will be a captain. And ten more years after that, I'll be a major and so forth. Okay. So, so you don't have like in, in, in the regular armed forces where you, you find you have uh, some young generals. So you have to definitely put in some years to uh, accomplish that, 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 uh, that, that leadership. Yes, indeed. Indeed. Okay, so but we would like to know that. And you are Belizean. Yes, I am a Belizean. I was born right here on Eve Street. Where oh, right here in San Ignacio? Uh, Belize City. Oh, in, oh, Belize City, because we have yes. an Eve Street here too. Okay. So, all right, so you were born here, you are Belizean. Because most of the time we find out that uh, I guess maybe that's the time when they are rotating, you guys. Yes. Uh, but most of the time we have uh, other people from different uh, parts of the Caribbean in particular that comes uh, and, and, and head these different um, positions here. Yes, that's because mostly we, um, you don't have much Belizeans who have entered into the ministry full time. Mm -hmm. So, in, And secondly, it's a rare thing when you are sent back home so quickly after um, finishing your studies and so forth. Uh, I just recently returned from Trinidad where I was serving there as the pastor of the um, Port of Spain Central Corps, my mm -hmm. wife and I. And so now we are back home in Belize, here in Georgeville, serving the people of the Georgeville village and all a whole, the Cayo district. Okay, so your wife is also Belizean? Yes, sir. My wife is Belizean. And she has a rank as well? Yes, she is also lieutenant. Oh, okay. Both well. of us went in <laughs> at the same time to study. That's, that's so good. Yes. That is, that is so nice. And um, you should have brought her, man. But well, she's taking care of our precious little one at the oh, moment. Oh, okay. Uh, how old is my daughter Joanna is uh, going to be three months in another few days. Okay. So young, 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 young yes, child. Yes, yeah. our, our princess is very yeah. young. Yes, man. Yes. Well, um, it is nice to have you here, and uh, we like to uh, en enlighten our radio listeners and viewers and, uh, as to what it is that the Salvation Army actually does. Because sometimes we only, we only hear about the Salvation Army when it comes closer to Christmas. And we would like to give the opportunity to you, since you will be here with us, and you're not so far from here, you're there in Georgeville, to come more often here in the program so that we can get more people to know what Salvation Army is all about. And I've, I have been I'm knowing about Salvation Army from when I was a little boy, always Salvation Army. And where, where does Salvation Army start it from? Where, where is the roots of Salvation Army? Well, it, it's originally from um, England, where uh, our founder, William Booth, he was a part of the Methodist Church. But um, later on, he went and he started the Salvation Army. It was Christian Mission back then. And the okay. name later on changed to Salvation Army. Okay. For the mere fact is that most people don't know that we are a church, first and foremost. They always see us as a social arm where we help people um, at Christmas time, but we don't only help people at Christmas. We well, help that's people what I'm saying. Throughout the year. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah. All right. As you will notice on our signs, it says need has no season. And so when people come to us with a need, um, we try to help them as much as possible uh, as long as the resources are there. And so, but it is at this time of the year, especially that we have a drive um, to help as many families as possible with a Christmas hamper with groceries and so forth, and then we have a little party for the children. Um, here in the Georgeville um, community, 
we don't only serve the Georgeville, as I said, it's, it's going to be open to the entire Carrier District, which mm -hmm. means Belmapan right up to Benke. Mm -hmm. And um, we want to at least try to see if we can do 100 families. Okay. Uh, so your, your, this drive will be uh, taking place not only in Belize City, but this drive will be taking place here in San Ignacio as well. Uh, am I correct? Well, we are hoping to get a, a, a couple stores in San Ignacio whereby we could set up our kettle stands. Presently, we only have them in Belmopan mm -hmm. at uh, Builders Hardware, um, the mall, and um, I think it's another Chinese store going in, between in, courts in, Bel in, in Belmopan. Belmopan. Also, okay. Belize Bank, we have, a, have a stand going up there today, and we are just awaiting the go-ahead from Scotia Bank also. Oh, this is for here in in in, 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 in Belmopan. So when will you be putting up your 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 kettles here in San Ignacio? I'm hoping by um, in this week to come we'll okay. be able to set up a stand or two, as long as we get the permission from the business places and and, and so forth, we can go ahead. Because it's not that we just could come and set up a stand. We gotta uh, follow protocol and we gotta write them and they gotta respond to us and so forth. Even though it is charitable work that we are doing. And this is a yearly thing as well. So it is just a repeat of last year request. In, yes, indeed, definitely. Yes. Okay, and uh, to to for the view uh, listeners and for myself. You know, sometimes you, you, you want to find out something, you could get, always Google it. But, um, you know, sometimes it is not something that we intend to, to, to want to know. But since you are here, we would like to know it and people would, would be appreciative of it. About how many members are in the Salvation Army worldwide? Yeah. Do you oh, have any? Uh, that's a good question. All I could tell you is that we are in 130 countries around the world okay. today. Okay. Um, we are 16 countries in the Caribbean, especially, because Belize is a part of the Caribbean territory. All right. And so there are 16 countries that the Caribbean serves. But overall, there are uh, 130 countries in the world where the Salvation Army okay. is. Uh, one of the reasons why I ask this question here, uh, Lieutenant uh, Rabato, is uh, that the, the Bible says that uh, the, the word of God will be preached throughout the whole entire world before Christ comes back. And so if you have this amount of people and the other denominations have so many people around the world, then, of course, unless are th they are the same people that they are, maybe some people visit your, your denomination and some people visit the other one, the same people. But all in all, when you total all of these hundreds of thousands of people from different uh, countries, it is almost ripe for, for that. Yes. Uh, just a little information there, though. The... Christian religion, Christianity, mm -hmm. hosts about 2 billion people right. in the world today. Mm -hmm. um, it can be a little bit more, but the last statistics were 2 billion just for Christianity alone. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about the Muslims and the, um, the Hindus and the other religions as yet, because those also have their, their numbers in the millions. But Christianity on a whole have over 2 billion people. Um, and yet there are many more to be reached. For, well, for that's, Christ. That's why. Right, that's why. Right. And and that, that's what the Bible says. Until the, all that has happened, until everybody get to know who Christ is or get the information of, as to the knowledge of Him, then it, who who accept or who don't accept is up to them. But the, the point is that all of the entire world should will be able to to hear about about Christ. Indeed. And, and uh, that this is one of the main things as how the Salvation Army started too. We started um, with street meetings. Okay. Having meetings on the corner of different streets and people would come and accept Christ and so forth. And it's something that we will be um, doing here in San Ignacio starting next year again. We did it in Belmopan whereby we would be there for um, every other month or so on doing a street meeting. So this coming year in 2019, it is my desire that we will bring that to San Ignacio and and um, Santa Elena and do different street meetings once a month and um, invite people to come to know Christ. That is so good, Pastor, because of the fact that as we look around all the churches, they are all lukewarm. Well, then I wouldn't say lukewarm, you know. It's just that some people are afraid to come out their doors. They have so gotten so accustomed to stay indoor, they are afraid to come out. But in the Salvation Army, we, we, we go out to be where the people are. We try to reach them where they are. And, and, and that is my thing. That's how I came to the Salvation Army. And that's why I love the Salvation Army. Because we go out to, to, to do street meetings and to reach people where they are and share the gospel with them. 
and that's how many other people came to know Christ also and joined the Salvation Army. All right. Well, well, your uh, your your uh, your your ministry here in Georgia um, has it been growing since you 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 find out that the records there has it been growing since the other pastor had left? It, it's 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 very difficult since I've been back home. Um, when I was in Trinidad and in Jamaica, for example, I heard of all the members that were there in the, in the church. And since I've come, I have not seen as many people okay. as I have heard. But it is my desire that next year coming, um, you know, we will see how much of these people will be able to reach um, and then try to reach even more. But on a whole, most churches today they are suffering in, in, in growth because people don't want to to go to church they prefer just to stay home and listen to church on radio or on the television uh, and not be a part of a congregation which they fail to realize that jesus said um in hebrews chapter 10 and 25 it says that we must not forget the assembling of, our, um, of ourselves one with another it is true coming together in a corporate worship that we encourage each other and we build each other up and and so we get strength from that so i encourage people uh, to come out to church, whichever church you go, whether it is the Salvation Army, the Baptists, the Nazarenes, the Methodists, the Anglicans, the, the, the Catholics, go to church and, and fellowship with other um, believers and be encouraged. Yeah, and uh, that, that is so true. Somebody just posted something there. It says, I need help this season. Things are, really, things are rough. Um, so do you, you, you don't give, people can't put in their... their uh, the application for such a drive well we um, as I said we are aiming for a hundred food hampers and um, they can come down to the Salvation Army Georgeville Corps um, we'll be giving out the tickets um, next month where I'm, I'm not, I haven't set a date as yet but as soon as I set a date I will let you know so that you can announce it and so people can know and they can come and they bring their social security card and we will register them and they will be able to get something. Yeah, um, uh, Pastor, I, ha I, have, I have something about that because most of the time, people who don't need it are the very same ones that go and get it and indeed put a block, uh, block the, the other people who really need it. And, and uh, so often this has been happening and this has been happening with our political uh, gifts that the, the politicians would give out and, and, and these festive seasons. They, you know, it is given to people who don't really need it, who have the opportunity to buy on their own. But yet, because it is something free and they know that they could access this, they push themselves in there, and, and that would hamper somebody actually who really need it. I agree with you. Oh, how would you go about screening and scrutinizing the people who really need? Do your community members there in Georgeville be able to identify? that this, 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 this lady, I really need it. No, that lady no need it. She, she have bank account, the Belize Bank and Scotia Bank, and she have one car, living in her own house, you know, they pay no rent, and things like that. Because these are the same people who don't need it that will go and get it. Yeah, I agree with you 100%, but it's very difficult to really say who need from who don't need, uh, especially for me at this point that I am I'm new. And the, for the fact also that the Salvation Army don't turn away anybody. Yes, so. Sir whether or not you need it or not and you come to us uh we will not turn you away because that's not what christ preached i agree with you sir so but my main objective and my main thing is that it's for those who truly and honestly need it i would like to reach yes sir. if you don't need it i encourage you not to come and, and sign your name up if you have a car if you have a bank account as he said if you have whatever it is more than someone else that truly need it then I encourage you not to come, but I encourage those that who truly need it to come and to get the, the blessing. Yes, sir. And this is, and, and I, I like what you said, come and get the blessings. Now, if you, God can work miracles in different, in, well, he have worked miracles in that regard, but you come there and you don't need it, then there can be curse awarded to you as well, because you, God knows for a fact that you don't need it. Yes, that is true. And this is, we are having, we are having a lot of difficult times as, as, as indeed, but um, we definitely have to realize that because of this type of, of, of greed, is, is, it is what keeps us economically down right now because we could have further ourselves if, if the people who really had needed got the, 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 the blessings that uh, were meant especially for them. 
Well, but we are here. Yes, and, 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 and the thing is that I am not God to, to judge anyone. Of to course. Say who <laughs> they need it or they don't need it. Yes. So you can't come. You know, you uh, um, you like you said, the doors is open for the everyone. Door, so the doors are open. Well, to we just we just pray everyone. that the right one gets through that door. Yes, that really need it. Indeed, that, that's I, the prayers that we we would offer up for 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 people who would um, need to 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 visit the Salvation Army, and by that they might be able to you might uh, en enforce and well not enforce but implant in them the the message of love and they would get um, be to be a member. Yes, and, and the thing is that on the day of the distribution, there will be a short service before we give out the food hampers so that we share them with them the Christmas message. Okay. And after we've done that, then we are going to be distributing out the food hampers to the people. Oh, all right. Um, um, Pastor, I want to ask uh, Lieutenant, uh, what, do you have Bibles that you, that, uh, you give out as well? Or, uh, because I've asked this question to some churches and they never have Bibles. Usually churches would be giving out a little Bible here and there, but you know, uh, for people who need. At the moment, we don't have any Bibles to give out, um, but I am in the process of trying to see how we can acquire some mm -hmm. to be able to give to those who would like to have a copy of the, the Bible. Yeah, um, we got, mm -hmm. There was once a time when you could have gotten Bibles from the Gideon um, Bible Society, but now even that is kind of scarce. So we have to seek other avenues on how we'll be able to acquire a few Bibles to okay. give out. Well, I, I, one of the things I would, would believe that hamper these type of uh, gifts would be because of the technology and people can access the Bible and, the, and their phone, uh, but it is not like the real thing, the physical Bible itself, because I remember somebody hold up their phone and says, this have the Bible in it, but this is not holy. But when you hold up the Bible in, in the real thing, this is the holy Bible, you know, so this is well, something that... I, I disagree with that. Because the word of God is holy wherever it is. It doesn't have to be in a written book where you could uh, hold up, as you said, and say this is the whole. Because I believe they said that because the, the, the thing says holy Bible. Right. But the word of God is holy wherever it is. Because God is holy. And so if you have it on your phone, it is holy. Because it is the word of God. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to say holy Bible on there to say holy. Be holy. It is the word of God, and the word of God is holy. Okay. I, I know there are some churches who, who, who has that same idea, and there are some churches who don't want you to, to, to have your cell phone turned on in the church as a respect uh, going into the house of God, as we rightfully turn off our cell phones if you are going to the courts. Yes. And so that, that is the big law there. And so the rules. And so they, they likewise in some churches... They say, well, you know, you, you, you're supposed to turn off. Well, not in the church, but it's some pastors in the very same church. They would, other pastors don't say it, but certain pastors go, well, it says, well, we ask you to turn off your cell phone. But it is all, as, as what you say, uh, everything is holy one is the, while, while it is the word of God. Yes, indeed. And, of course, um, I encourage people to put their phones on silent mm -hmm. um, when they come to church or on vibrate. Because uh, it's very disturbing when you are leading and someone's cell, phone's, uh, cell phone will ring and then you see they will bend down and, and, and answer it and speak. Um, that is very discouraging and um, it's ill-mannered. So I always ask people to turn their cell phones off or put it on vibrate or silent. And if they have an emergency, then they just step outside and answer the call. Yes, sir. There you have it. Thanks for enlightening us as well, you know, Pastor. Because that is a, that's how you uh, address, Pastor. Same thing. Yes. Okay. Yes. So what we'll do, we'll uh, come back and uh, take a little break and then come right back with some uh, final words from uh, uh, Lieutenant Edward Rabatu from the Salvation Army uh, here in Georgia. I want to say top of the morning going out there to uh, these stock burgers inside of the Welcome Center. Good morning to you. Hope that all goes your way. Kaya Center for Employment Training. And remember, Kaya Center for Employment Training will be having their uh, open house uh, this, uh, well, next Thursday, this coming Thursday, uh, from 9 o'clock until 2 in the afternoon. So you can uh, see yourself over there, enjoy the beautiful arrangement and everything that they have to offer and 
so many information that they will be given forth on that day. Uh, that's the 22nd of October. Kaya Center for Employment Training. I want to say top of the morning going out there to Cash Genius Pawn Shop right here in Santa Elena opposite the St. Ignatius High School. Good morning to you. And that's where you can get uh, well more money for your item spawn. And they give you the longest period of time to reclaim those loans right there, which is 30 days. Top of the morning going out once again to Cali Style Boutique. And that's not open as yet, but will be coming very, very soon. Opposite Marta's Kitchen, Guest House, and Laundry Service. Right adjacent to uh, mm -hmm, Alwyn's uh, Market. Is that Alwyn's? Uh, I do believe it is. Okay, well, all the same. Good morning. Going out there to this and that. This and that. Uh, that's uh, where you can create your own plate. I mean, they have all different types of dishes right there. Um, the regular rice and beans menu. They have uh, soup. They have uh, what else? Oh, two numbers to mention. Yep, that's right. What this and that and their telephone number is six two six thirty three seventy eight. And uh, by the way, they do uh, catering for cakes, and uh, you can put in your orders for those black cakes for the Christmas as of now so that you won't be late in that rush. It's 10 minutes before 8 o'clock right here, uh, before 9 o'clock right here in the studios of the Big Maximum Radio, 104.1. And hmm, love somebody right here coming to you, and we'll be back right after that. Okay, top of the morning. Like it or not, on a beautiful Friday morning. There you have it. There you have it right there as we're closing up right now with uh, Pastor Lieutenant, Lieutenant uh, Edward Rubber Two. So, um, Lieutenant, what would be the, uh, the goal uh, for your uh, kettle drive? I mean, do you have uh, expect, expect an amount, expecting an amount that you would like to reach? Yes. Um, this, my wife asked me the very same question, actually. I am thinking uh, uh, with the help of the public, we should be able to um, reach about $12,000. Mm -hmm. If we are able to do that, then it will make Christmas merrier for, for many more people. Because as I said, it's not only the families that we're looking forward to, to assist at the moment, but we also want to do a party for the children. And, and so that takes money also. Um, uh, and so if and when you pass the pots, wherever they may be, I ask you kindly to to drop something in there to make this goal be um, reachable. And if we do so, then a lot more people will be able to get some help. Yeah. 
Um, I, I want to ask a question because people were dropping a little 25 cents and 50 cents and whatever they drop. But have you ever had any big contribution, like maybe a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars from one that from one establishment that maybe believe that they were blessed from God, as we, we rightly know that God gives us all blessings, and they are willing to share that amount or plus. Uh, not as not as yet. Since the, uh, we we just started the, the season uh, um, last week, and um, and we set up the pots last week, but so far we haven't been able to receive such a large donation. Have you have you wit have you witnessed it elsewhere where you have been? Um, yes, in the city where the headquarters is, and and the, the drive is also in the city. Um, there are businesses who have donated that amount of money, and exactly. some have donated well, more. Well, God bless them. You because know. this is it, you know. If if we have ten dollars and we can take a, a dollar out of that ten dollars and give you, or two dollars out of that ten dollars and give you, I don't see why people that have uh, a million dollars or five hundred thousand dollars can take uh, ten thousand dollars or a thousand dollars from that and give, you know. And I, I encourage people to 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 see where it is. We get God give us a hundred percent, and um, He is asking, uh, He will bless you with 90 percent and or you rather just go along and just say well i i don't know i, I get it i keep the whole hundred percent and don't get any type of additional blessing it's rather to get the 90 percent and get continuous blessing yes indeed i always encourage people that they must give back to god at least the 10 percent that he requires exactly because i said prophetically once in trinidad and i have shared it here with my members that i was um, sharing the sermon on a, on a Sunday afternoon for Harvest Thanksgiving. And while I was doing that, I, didn't, I, I prophetically said to the congregation there that if you don't give your 10% to the Lord, you'll give more than 10% to the doctors. <laughs> that is so true. This and, is exactly and, what this is. And it does happen to, to people. So it's best that we give back to the Lord what is His, which is only 10%. 90% is yours. Exactly so, So sir. just give Him the 10%. And God will honor your, 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 your word and your commitment and he will bless you. Um, but I want to encourage our listeners uh, and, and, and every single person that can hear us that as they pass the different kettles, whether it is in Belmopan or right here in San Ignacio or in Belize City, wherever that they will at least try to drop something in there so that it can be a Merry Christmas for someone else. Okay. Well, as we are getting closer to uh, the December, uh, well, in, in the month of December, I would like you to come back once again to, to find out more on this, how that kettle drive is going, and uh, so that we can once again motivate the, the uh, listeners and uh, viewers of this program that they can uh, continue to share um, their blessings towards other people's blessings as well. Most definitely. Um, I will be more honored to be back again and to let you know how we are doing and let the public know how we are doing because I'm a person of transparency. Mm -hmm. I, I don't hide anything from people. If you give me $10, that's what is going to re be recorded there, $10. If you give, whatever amount you give to me, I will record that amount and that amount will be deposited into the bank. So um, even anybody that knows me, they can know that transparency is my thing. So whatever amount of money we collect for the um, Christmas kettle drive, the public will know. Well, this is exactly what I'm saying there, Pastor. That is exactly why we need transparency in our beloved country. And so many times people get financing and they are in the public's eye, but they refuse to tell us exactly what is made from these uh, profits that are out there that the public gave them. And this is for, for our phones, our, our, our owners, and our, well, I don't know if the owners is the right name to call it, but these organized phone companies, they do these tele teleton drives for themselves, and it's a profit, and we don't know how much is made from it. And, and we need to know to be transparent. And then when we hear down the road that there is corruption here and corruption there, it is start because of the lack of transparency from the very small things that we should be given accountable for. Yes. And we are thankful that you have made that known to us, Pastor, and we um, ask that God blessings be on you and your family, and that you continue on from here. We will definitely would like to welcome you back here in the show in the month of, later on in the month of December. Please, the good Lord, so that you can update us as to 
how it's going. Yes, I will be back as you request, and I will let you know exactly how we are doing. So I would like to say thank you very much for having me this morning. And I uh, thank you, Belize. And again, I ask you as you pass the pots, please drop something in there. I, I encourage businesses also to give to this worthy cause so that someone can have a blessed and Merry Christmas this year. All right. Well, there you have it, folks. You have been listening to the program, Like It or Not. I'm Jim Arnold Rabon, and with me was uh, Pastor uh, Lieutenant Edward Rabatou from the Salvation Army. God bless all of you guys, and uh, remember, don't text and drive. Always remember to buckle up and have a, a safe weekend. And, of course, happy Garifuna Day uh, celebration to each and every one of you. Good morning to you. Sing for all of you. Sha-la-la. -la.